Grab some coffee. A Mountain Dew. Maybe both. A storm is brewing. The Brainstorm. Welcome to The Brainstorm with Matt and Mike. Hey, welcome to The Brainstorm with Matt and Mike. We use our experience on this show to kind of help you navigate the hurdles in the business world, kind of business ownership, maybe help you avoid a little bit of pitfalls. And from time to time, we have guests on our show, Mike, and I know that over the past couple of weeks, we've had a number of really great guests from business owners to CEOs to business executives. And, uh, and our show is really just about business building, helping businesses prosper, uh, especially right now in this whole COVID-19. Absolutely, Matt. You know, our, our economy is really built on small business. It sure and is. So although we serve people in a range of business sizes uh, from large to small, uh, we know that that America is really built on small business, and especially right now, it's so important that we all go out and support our local business owners. Yeah, that's a that's a true statement. We we talked about job creation yesterday uh, in, in another show uh, that we're producing on one of our podcasts, which, which mm-hmm. you can be found if you're viewing us uh, on our YouTube channel or, or listening to us live on the radio. You can always go to thebrainstormradio.com, check us out on our podcast. You can hear that show. Um, uh, we had uh, the CEO and founder of the Chamber of Commerce, and he deals with a lot of businesses. Uh, but today, I'm very excited. We have Dr. Shane Connor from Collaborative Healthcare joining us today. Welcome to the show, Dr. Connor. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're pretty pumped. Uh, uh, Dr. Connor has been a client of ours for what a little over a year, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, and 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 who saw a COVID nineteen coming down the pipe? So mm. have your hands full with that. We all, especially all being businesses. that you're in physical, physical medicine yeah. <laughs> during COVID-19. <laughs> it's been, it's been a ride. That's for sure. I love the idea of the name collaborative healthcare, like the word collaborative, right? We, we mm-hmm. talk about here how collaborative we are. And I know that you kind of rebranded. Tell us a little history uh, of the firm and how, how it went from one name and, and one service over to what it is today. Well, that's a good question. Um, we started in 2002 as a solo practitioner okay. um, at the location at 716 Old Cherokee Road here in Lexington. And um, yeah, started with a brand new building and a piece of land and um, probably pretty crazy. I always kind of jump all in. You yeah. Know? <laughs> and, Exciting uh, time, though, I bet. It was. I, I worked really hard with getting out in the community and um, letting people know what we did. And we grew pretty rapidly. And initially, it was just me and my wife. And uh, over the course of several years, that ended up being four or five, six employees. And then through about year seven into year eight, um, you know, I just I just saw a need to do something different. And so I started kicking around this idea of having medical practitioners also in the office with me. And uh, because we had utilized, you know, gotten started getting a lot of referrals from medical docs. And, you know, we also referred to PT. And I just felt like, you know, for the best care of the patient to organize the situation and and really triage a patient through a musculoskeletal injury, we needed to have all those folks around us Mm. Um, and not just have an independence, you know, know, anti-inflammatories or painkillers only or just PT only or just chiropractic only. Why wouldn't we put all that together to get the most effective treatment that we could? So, you know, I needed to change the name. So I just felt like the word, you know, I looked up a lot of words and synonyms for what I was trying to do and collaborative kept coming up, you know. So that's why we changed the name. Um, That way we could bring medical practitioners into the office, treat patients, and then collaborate with one another and what we're going to do to get them better. I think it's fantastic. So you originally started off in chiropractic Mm -hmm. and you saw the need to add these additional services really to give a patient a more, a more holistic approach is right that, well and hearing? yes exactly and the other thing is um i think is time efficiency so one of the biggest complaints i would hear from patients were you know just using this as an example you know like i saw my general practitioner and they gave me an anti-inflammatory um suggested you know i have a disc injury that i get an mri so they schedule the mri for two weeks later and then i go get the mri and then two weeks later i go back and get the results and meantime i'm still hurting right. you know and um or you know with just chiropractic the same thing would happen it would just 
things just didn't seem to be as efficient as they could. So, you know, I don't want, it's kind of like the Walmarts of the world. You know, I just, it was kind of like, you know, why not have the one stop shop where people can come in, get answers to all of their problems, get whatever imaging they need done, get whatever treatment cycle they need done that day. Yeah, I love so that. So that's, and, that's and, kind of where it came from. People are fearful when they're going to, uh, to a healthcare environment mm-hmm. oftentimes. And, and if they're in pain, they're having an issue, they're having difficulty getting out as, as they would normally. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so having one place they go where they, they can meet with one staff and build a relationship and, and accomplish all of that in one place. That's a, a fantastic um, kind of setup and a fantastic name to go right along with it. I think so. So I think, great job with <laughs> I that. think it works pretty good. I'd love to take credit for it, but that was before us. <laughs> yeah, so that was before our great job. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, but it is. It is right. I mean, collaborate when you when you're collaborating, and that's what you want your medical professionals to do, right? When you're having a problem, you you. I mean, we hear people all the time saying, I want a second opinion, right? I, right. I want I want to go see this person first. I want to go see this person first. And a number of people have recently told me, uh, a lot of medical professionals, that spe- especially in the physical therapy perspective or chiropractic, the physical medicine, if you will, have told me, you know, one of the first things that people do, oh, let's get an MRI. Right. And so there's a significant number of MRIs yeah. being done. Today, and a significant right? expense. Right. Significant. Yeah. And yeah. so right. it seems to me that there's a lot of medical insurance things going on there mm-hmm. as well. Now, I'm not, I don't live in that world. So. Yeah. Medical ins- the insurance really has started to push back on that. Yeah. Um, now, at times, I have to get on the phone and talk with another medical doc on the other side. Mm-hmm. And they want to know why I ordered this MRI. It's not mm-hmm. just order automatically because right. it's an expensive test, an expensive right. machine. Um, you got to have personnel to house it. And so um, it's not as easy as it used to be. And, you know, frankly, a lot of times when patients come into me, I really, through a good physical exam, know exactly what is wrong with them and, and what the disc problem is and which disc it is. And so I don't typically jump on it. And, and my medical staff doesn't either. Because in a lot of cases, we can get it well. Right. Right. But let's just say we have a patient who is in a tremendous amount of pain. And within a week or so, they're still writhing in pain. Well, I don't want them to be miserable. So, you know, we'll order an MRI to get a little bit better idea of what is going on with the disc. Um, And then maybe we can get them to pain management to have an epidural done, Mm. let 48 hours worth of rest, calm the disc down a little bit, then bring them in to treat them at that point when they're comfortable. Right. So we're trying to help save some money to the insurance companies um, and just be a little bit smarter about why we order those things. Not as invasive over time. Right. right? Without just automatically, oh, let's just do surgery. That's right. Right. Yep. Well, I love that. I love the theory of that because – uh, what you did is you started off in one realm. So from the business owners and business executives out there, un, un, uh, just listen to some experience right here. He started off as one service. He started si- kind of seeing a need. Uh, he then uh, started the transition to fill that need. Because uh, if, if you don't, uh, we we heard someone on our show say it yesterday, Mike, that if uh, uh, if the inside doesn't change as fast as the outside, then the end is near, right? That's and right. So, he started seeing that and started going down that realm, and and that gives us a lot of uh, a lot of insight into how business decisions are done. Then he then he rebranded. Sometimes a business has to go through a rebrand in order to get a new, clean, good message that's right. to the target market. Uh, and so that was that's an excellent way. Now, over the course of this segment, I definitely want our listeners and our viewers to really hear some of this cool regenerative type of medicine in that stem cell Mm -hmm. it is just one of the very best things and i also want to give dr connor a plug my mom who is a patient of his she couldn't even bend down she literally could not walk a flight of steps she couldn't bend down uh and ever since she went to dr connor had some stem cell injections uh, and i don't even know if i've given you an update on this uh she has walked multiple 5ks she did a 10k uh and so that's that's pretty good she's mid 60s upper 60s now at this point and uh she went from not being able to walk one flight of steps to walk in uh in some 10ks comfortably with zero pain that's, that's awesome. amazing awful that's one awesome. off one job. treatment off i mean one hey, treatment. the body did it we just helped it you know right. what i mean <laughs> right so so talk to us a little bit about those services so as you expanded beyond uh chiropractic uh what other services did you determine were 
were a good fit for you to add to your practice? So uh, we have our nurse practitioner and we also have a medical doc. Our nurse practitioner there, she does most of the procedures, but she does pain management. So, and, and we don't really do that through a lot of medications. Now she will do some like steroids to get a hot disc, kind of calm down. Um, but mainly she uses that through injection therapy. Um, so we actually can potentially put the medicine in the problem area, the area that's inflamed and get rid of it quicker as opposed to having to digest something to take just to hide okay. the pain. Um, so we do that. Um, we also do, as you were mentioning, stem cell therapy. And I think we'll get into that a little yeah, bit later. Um, but that still is for treatment, mostly of osteoarthritic joints. Um, people that are deciding what to do. So for me, the stem cell therapy treatments are the kind of like if you're at the stop sign, you're going to turn right or left. Let's say you're going to turn right and go to surgery or left to go to stem cell. At least you got these two options now. Um, because, uh, they're both in, and as far as they're on the same playing field and we'll, we'll talk about that later. So we treat those for arthritic joints. We also have massage therapy there, um, to work out the tension in the muscles. We, we incorporate that into a lot of our treatment plans. And we also, um, our Kristen, who is our nurse practitioner, she loves to do, uh, skincare. So she does, um, Botox. She uses Javo. Uh, we also do fillers for the face and lips and um, just to keep, you know, ladies looking the way they would like to look throughout their aging process. And she does, does a wonderful job at that. Awesome. I've been to your office many times, uh, Dr. Connor, and it, I was just telling Mike at it, it, uh, it break how impressed I am uh, with uh, uh, you can just tell that you and your team. Uh, in a collaborative, no pun intended, collaborative mm -hmm. healthcare type of way, uh, it's been a lot of time and effort and money mm -hmm. uh, investing in the ability to provide great solutions, better solutions uh, to your patients from a physical therapy or physical, I keep saying physical therapy, but physical medicine, I right. guess, is a better way right. of putting yep. it. That's the term we use. And anything from cosmetic, like you're talking about, to chiropractic care, mm -hmm. uh, to stem cell uh, to injections. Uh, you guys really have a lot going on. But Mike, right before, uh, you know, break, we were talking about uh, that you had a disc issue, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so just going back to the chiropractic care part of it, uh, tell our viewers and listeners about your experience uh, and what was happening. And then uh, we can talk about that decompression piece that he has. So, so one thing I'll say immediately is just having this conversation gives me hope. Uh, so a, a few years ago, two years ago, I believe, actually, I uh, started having some uh, some pain. Uh, fast forward, went through a series of x-rays, MRIs, uh, had a few injections. Uh, they determined I had a bulging disc between C6 and C7. Uh, it, you know, it even really tried some dry needling, I believe. Tried dry needling, physical therapy. And everyone that I worked with, uh, they were definitely not all in one location. And, uh, and they weren't really communicating. Uh, I think they were all great at what they do individually. Um, but eventually I just, uh, decided to, uh, to just kind of deal with it and, uh, have, have tried to, uh, just operate, stretch, do some things, but never really gotten rid of the issue. Uh, so the issue's still there. Just really tolerate and, the pain almost. Yeah. I guess you, you know, you get used to having, uh, pain. It's, I guess it's kind of like your vision when your vision goes bad, if you don't realize it. You're not wearing glasses or contacts, and then all of a sudden you get a pair of glasses or contacts, and you realize, man, it's like the world's in HD again. So uh, probably a similar thing, uh, I hope. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, went and talked to a surgeon, and uh, and they suggested um, surgery, and it didn't sound too favorable to me. So I've kind of just shelved it uh, until this conversation today. And uh, so just being completely transparent uh, here, listeners and uh, viewers, but. Uh, tell me, let's pick back up where our conversation was. So you were telling me about um, like a, a treatment that you provide, mm -hmm. a decompression. So we treat a lot of discs, and it's a it's a reason why a lot of folks show up in our office. And we also, our, our medical provider sees them as well, because I want the patient to be able to have a kind of a pain management plan. And then our chiropractic staff will see them as well. So we have uh, more of a mechanical plan as to what we need to do. So with disc treatment, typically for us on the chiropractic side, 
um, we will start with cervical or lumbar decompression, depending on where that disc is. And through a you know, physical exam, x-rays, a lot of times patients already have MRIs when they come in um, so that we can take a look at those to see you know, where it's at, how bad it is, what side, those kinds of things. Um, we will make a determination and treatment plan to start with decompression. And research shows that in many cases, you, you can run a risk if you adjust an area that has a, a pretty sizable disc herniation, you could actually make it a little worse. Um, so we decided what we do initially is we'll treat solely with cervical or lumbar decompression and treat that disc once the pain retracts from the arm or the leg and centralizes more to the spine, then we know we can remove them from decompression and we can then begin to, to adjust and take care and fix the mechanical reason why that, that disc herniated in the first place. Right. And, and decompression is a just very simple, comfortable treatment it's tell, tell me explain the decompression so it is a machine okay. uh, a very specific machine um, that we set up for neck solely or for low back and what it does through um, a, a computer we can put in exactly how much weight that we want to actually pull how much time we want it to pull and how much time we want to rest so the whole the, the definition of decompression is the imbibition of fluid. So what happens to a disc over time because of mechanical failure, misalignment that hasn't been taken care of, maybe a pain that you've dealt with and it hadn't really given you a, a mm -hmm. big time, right. you know, debilitating pain. And it just begins to wear down the disc. The disc cannot hydrate itself. Disc pump like pistons, like in a car. And that's why people feel better when they're arthritic and they move. They feel better after an hour or two. They're really stiff in the morning, but they feel better through the day. Okay. So this, this, the system breaks down over time and the disc becomes dehydrated. It is under so much pressure over time that it just gives away. It herniates just like a hernia in your, your abdominal, yeah. your abdominal region. So what this machine does is forces that hydration back into the disc. Well, guess what? That hydration carries stem cells. It carries collagen building factors. It carries anti-inflammatory factors, all the things to reconstruct the body. And it reconstructs the herniation and heals the herniation. So that's how people then get pressure off the nerve, pain retracts, and then we go to the mechanical cause, which is a misalignment, and we adjust it and fix it. And, and we've got to, you know, you can look up science on internet anywhere from 88 to 90% is where you're going to find it. Wow, that's, awesome. that, that is, that's, that's very exciting. Well, that's a lot more attractive than what they were explaining to me with surgery. Right. Uh, where right. they're going to go in through the front of my neck yeah. and, you know, yeah. hey, you might die during the procedure. And, uh, sure. And even if you don't, you're going to be, uh, you're gonna be quarantined for you know six weeks or whatever while the wound heals. Right. I don't. I don't. You know. I'm not trying yeah. to. And I don't want anybody to put, say I'm. I'm putting down the to surgery. Sure. But I want you to know there's options. Right. Okay. Before that, and you know, and people something want you options. can sit down and study and, right. and make people, an educated decision. You're exactly yeah. right. And people want options. They, right. They want. I mean, how many times have you heard people say, "I just want a second opinion on this before I go through," you know, this ordeal or this surgery or whatever the case may be. And and so people really like having options. And there's no doubt. Correct. I know uh, for you guys that are listening or view us, may, maybe you know us personally and, and, and been to our office or whatever. Uh, you know that Mike was six six foot two at one time, and now he's like five foot four. And this, yeah. so this disc is really Appreciate taking. Should have got to it much earlier. Yeah, this disc yeah. is really taking its toll on Mike, and so. Uh, we'll matter of fact, I, I want to try and get some of our show producers to grab me a phone book or something. That's the only thing a phone book's good for these days. <laughs> Put under Mike. Mike can be raised up. There's hope. Unreal. There's hope. There's hope. Uh, no, I, I tell you, I have a lot of low back pains, and I'm looking forward to going in and, and seeing Dr. Connor here really soon. And, and just so everybody knows, Dr. Connor is, uh, owns Collaborative Healthcare. Uh, it's on Old Cherokee Road mm -hmm. in Lexington. Uh, collaborative health care and uh, from anything for chiropractic to stem cell uh, to cosmetic uh, to inject anything physical medicine uh, mm -hmm. he can take care of you him and his staff he has a, a really really top-notch staff I've met them all and and they're really really good people so go in and check them out uh, give them a call uh, Dr. Shane Connor the founder uh, and owner uh, CEO of collaborative health care where they really handle everything physical medicine uh, from chiropractic to cosmetic to uh, to stem cell uh, to injections, all kinds of physical type of medicine. 
And, and it's just exciting to know that you have other options out there. We talked a lot about options in the last segment. And, and so for people that are having to go through that, I'm one because you know, I'm getting older and I'm fat and out of shape and it just causes <laughs> physical problems. Right. And so, uh, and there's probably some people listening that might be able to relate with me. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm the only one. I don't know. Uh, fat my, old bald guys, um, uh, right. Probably pretty common. Right. Right. Common right. <laughs> it, I know my grandmother used to put it so light, you know, so, so politely when she used to say, I, I would say, well, I'm losing a little bit of weight. And she'd say, well, at least you're tall. There you go. <laughs> right. Like, in other words, in other words, if yeah. you were short and that big, right. you would have a major problem. Yeah. Yeah. That's she what couldn't you, tell you had good hard hair, time right. finding clothes. At, at least you're tall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll take that. Yeah. Hey, whatever. Well, Dr. Conner, we really appreciate you joining us on our show. I really wanted to dive deep into the word stem cell. Like it's regenerative medicine, but it's really hard to understand. Mm -hmm. And uh, so talk to us about just stem cell treatment uh, how it works and all the all the kind of the goodies to go along with that. Okay. Yeah. So it's been around for quite some time, especially in Europe. You know, Europe seems to be so much more advanced than we are in a lot of ways. But um, it really got quite popular about uh, seven years ago, six, seven years ago uh, from professional athletes. Okay. Because let's think about a professional athlete. Uh, let's say you got a basketball player and they've got a shoulder or a knee problem, all right? And they've got to have surgery. Season's over. Right. Right? Uh, so Possibly their career. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly, yes. So they started looking for other, other things to do. PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma, which is your blood, started working with that a little bit, but we found that the PRP really works better for muscle, things that have lots of blood flow. It didn't really work so well for joints because joints don't have a lot of blood flow. OK, so then they began to, to do this whole stem cell thing. Well, stem cells are kind of the master cell of the body. They can become whatever they are to attach to. So if a stem cell attaches to a liver, but it's a liver cell. If it attaches to a pancreas, it's a pancreas cell. If it goes to the blood system, it's a vein or an artery. Um, but one of the major things is, is that it helps to regrow cartilage. It helps to repair tendon and ligament. So. These labral tears, rotator cuff tears, severe osteoarthritis of the knee, a meniscus injury, you know, those kinds of things are very common injuries that we see in the population. Initially, we thought that we could freeze these cells from placenta. And I want to make sure people understand this is not coming from aborted babies these are donors okay right, right that doesn't happen that's against the law that was some of the things we had to deal with when we initially started this stuff uh, about five years ago um but what we found was it had a huge amount of collagen building factors in the solution huge amount of anti-inflammatory factors inside the solution that came from the placenta it did have stem cells but they were dead gotcha but that's what we had so people actually got results because the collagen actually helped to rebuild some tissue and repair. Okay. And the uh, anti-inflammatory markers helped with pain. Mm. But then four or five, six months later, they were right back where they started. Mm. So there was a lot of marketing going on, stem cell, stem cell. Well, actually, the FDA stepped in and said, well, you're, you're, you're not selling stem cell. Okay, you're selling this stuff, but you're not actually selling stem Which cell. Which is completely different. So there was some, there were a lot of marketing fallacies out there and i think people really kind of got turned off mm -hmm. all right so we've hung in there all right so we went and got more training because i truly believe in this science i really think this is going to be medicine of the future and we got trained on how to pull your own live stem cell from your body and inject it into your joint. So the procedure takes about 35 to 45 minutes. And that's where the regenerative. That's where from. the whole regeneration comes from. Yes. Right. Uh, we actually pull your stem cells from a place called the PSIS uh, of your hip. And it's in the pelvis. It's a real, real easy place to get to. It's very painless. I know it sounds like it's not, but I promise you it is. You're going to feel a little stick with some lidocaine. That'll be the last thing you feel. Yeah. And then when we're done, you get a little Band-Aid on your rear end and you have maybe a little bruise there the next day. And that's about it. Okay. Uh, but we pull your live stem cell from there. And we have a very 
specialized tool that takes a lot of the blood away from the sample and pulls the marrow into the hub, which is what we want because that's where it's really, really rich in stem cell. And then we inject that into your knees or shoulders. Um, that's mainly what we do right now because that's kind of most of the injuries. It can go in wrist. It can go in the ends of thumbs, the CMC joint. It can go in ankles. Um, we try to hit more of the larger joints because it's just it's an easier process to do. But the advantage here is, is that all of that stuff is regenerated. So we can take a person who has mild arthritis, moderate arthritis, even severe arthritis, it will actually regrow the stem cell treatment will actually regrow the cartilage. And we've, they've actually got studies within six months and they've re MRI'd these people's knees and there's like a 25% growth of cartilage. Wow. wow. Now to think That's about fantastic. that, we've lived our whole life degenerating and telling, Hey, you just gonna have to yeah. deal with the pain, buddy. But now we actually have something that regenerates the body. Um, and we're just putting what your body already makes yeah, it's in your own. very high yeah. qualities and quantities into the joint that's affected. And the joints like the shoulder and the knee are encapsulated. So the solution stays there. You know, a, a good 90 percent of it, a, a little bit will be taken up by the blood system, but most of it stays there. So as soon as it finds the area that's damaged, it attaches to it and it starts reconstructing and rebuilding. So you say knees and shoulders. Is that the primary two areas that stem cells use these days? It is um, right now. Okay. Yeah, I, I see. We see the best research in those areas. There's tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of studies. Um, what we're really hoping for down, since I am a chiropractor, right, um, is that we're going to find a way to inject the same solution into the disc so that we can repair herniated disc. Because we all know that putting the fake disc in there, removing the disc causes a no, uh, just all host of other different mm -hmm. problems. And it's not tremendously effective after six months of your patients are right back in pain again. But this will actually regenerate the herniated disc material and rebuild the disc. That seems to be, the, to me, the wave of the future. I'm telling you, my mom loves it because my mom's a patient of yours, like I said earlier, uh, and she had it done. Right. And uh, your medical doctor came in uh, and, and, and did the procedure. I mean, it literally, she was super anxious because she's just an anxiety-driven person anyway. And and she was super anxious and uh she wasn't back there 10 minutes mm -hmm. 15 minutes and came out and was like wow i didn't even that i didn't even feel it yeah and and she said that uh, i mean literally i mean she was you told her you told her to go home and rest that day a little bit just give it some healing time by the end of the week she was already significantly feeling better and she went from not being able to bend down not being able to walk a flight of steps uh, to being able to walk a 5K and subsequently a 10K within a sh relatively short period of time, 60 or 90 days. And I watched her and she just praises uh, the procedure. She praises the medicine. She praises you and your office uh, for doing that. It's, it's really, really cool. I know that you had a lot of people ask a lot of questions about this type of medicine, mm -hmm. right? And so what are some of the questions like insurance, right? That's probably right. one of the most popular. Yeah. Tell me it, about some of the answers to those questions. It is. And and that's what I want to make sure everybody understands. It is a procedure that's still not covered by insurance. And this is not something abnormal. It it takes insurance sometimes five mm -hmm. to ten years to to, right. to pick it up. But it is very effective. Um, and in many cases, very much less expensive than having a total knee replacement. Even without the insurance. Even without the insurance, because uh, let's look at the insurance can landscape right now. I mean, most people that come into my office now have $5,000, $7,500, dollars $10,000 deductibles. Yeah, we, I think we're, our group is like $7,500 right. or something. And when I first started in practice, the average deductible was 250 bucks. Yeah. All amazing. right. Amazing. It's just totally morphed. Now there are some people that have excellent insurance. Okay. And, 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 but even with that, it's an 80, 20 plan. Mm -hmm. So 20% of that knee surgery at $56,000, you're going to have to pay for. And so that could be 12 to $13,000. Well, this procedure will cost you anywhere from five to six grand total. And you'll walk in and walk out. You won't have to worry about the pain and the, the recovery, recovery and all the six months to, to a year before the knee feels the same again. So it definitely has a lot of advantages, even with cost. So I think you would agree with me because you and I have spent a lot of time on this subject, golfers, tennis players, 
uh, basketball runners, runners. Yeah, we see a uh, lot of those. Just, just uh, some, and you don't have to be any of those. You can just have these ailments with mm-hmm. your shoulders, and just with knees, age, just with age. And so, yeah, I mean, it can significantly from reduced recovery time, from pain to to just significant improvement is something that if you're having these physical problems, you definitely should take a look at. Regardless of what service uh, someone might might be you know, needing whatever solution they might need. Kind of what's the process? You know, that's one of the things that we find oftentimes people just don't know how to, to go about moving forward. So if, if someone's interested, they visit your website, they call, what, what happens after that? Well, essentially one of my girls will answer the phone, they'll get insurance information. You can actually fill our forms out online through our website at chclex.com um, and have all that stuff done. And that's really the best way to do it. We'll have all the insurance information checked. We'll know what your coverage is. And we really, we also try to give you um, a heads up on that as well. The first thing that we do is we triage the patient. So chiropractic staff will see that patient if needed. Our, our medical staff will see that patient if, if needed. But we'll, we'll have an exam done. You'll have an exam done with our medical staff, an exam done with the chiropractic staff. And then we'll decide what uh, type of imaging that we need to use. Uh, we'll do that. Uh, we have uh, someone who does all of our x-rays in office. Then we'll come back and meet and decide what the treatment and course is going to be. So you'll have all the information for what type of treatment we're going to do, how many times we're going to see you, what each appointment is going to look like before you leave on the first day. Fantastic. That makes it super se- seamless, mm-hmm. really. And right. uh, I love being able, Mike, to have that the whole picture right then and there so you can make the most educated decision possible. Right. Uh, Dr. Connor, talk to me about like the business. You've been in business around 20 years now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, it seems it's ups and downs. It's seen some transition time from chiropractic to uh, some other types of medicine. Um you know, and in, in from just today's climate, things seem to go ups and up and down, if you will, from a business perspective. Right before the show started, uh, came on, you and I were talking about kind of what's hot right now. And, and you were telling me that what's hot right now is some cosmetic stuff. Mm-hmm. What's going on in the cosmetic world? Well, interesting enough, um, through COVID, I think I can speak to all business owners right now. It's been tough. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we've all seen reductions in our business. Uh, so it's, it's been a struggle, but you know, we, we're going to get through it. We're all going to get through it. We're going to be fine. But you know, that's just one of the things about struggling, changing business. I, I believe, you know, you're, you're always changing in business. No doubt. You're never static, right? right? right. This day is never going to be the same. Right. So you got to all, you always have to be prepared for the future because you can actually change the future. You can't change the past, right? That's you can right. learn from the past right. and you can affect the future. So as business owners, we all have to be fluid like that or you're not going to last very long. Yeah. But one of the interesting things that's happened with COVID is that we've seen a major increase in our cosmetic services. And it, it's, it's very interesting just the way people will spend cash money. Right. And, um, that we've had a, almost a 30% increase through COVID, mm-hmm. which we saw a 70% decrease in chiropractic and a 45% decrease in medical procedures. Right. And, you know, we're, we've, we've, we battled back, but for that to be steady and grow just shows you what people are willing to spend money on. So I guess it's so really, like things like Botox or yeah, Botox. Uh, we have two different fillers. I fillers think. Yeah. yeah. For the lips and face. Um, and, you know, I want to make a point too, that guys that are listening out there, um, there are a lot of guys that are also taking care of how they look, you know, because a lot of guys are in sales no doubt. Uh, and they're, they're out there competing for business and, and, you know, a nice suit, hey, but also look, having a nice looking face look helps, good, right? Feel, look good. Feel yeah. Good. Yeah. That's it. You know, being clean, manicured, all those things. So, um, you know, guys, you don't have to hang your head in shame when you come into the office. We love seeing it. I mean, I love seeing the guys come in, but you know, we are seeing a large increase in, in some of the, the, the male aspects of cosmetics. So you, too. So you think COVID-19 has got people, uh, at home looking at themselves going, you know, I need to get, I think they're looking at themselves in the mirror too much right now. You know, it's like really nitpicking everything, but, but, you know, Kristen Joyner, she's our, our nurse practitioner and she, she does a really good job at 
making people look very naturally pretty. You know, I know you folks have seen some of these shows on TV. And you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they yeah. look like the plastics. What is yeah, that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, our patients don't look like that when yeah, they come out. They awesome. look very natural, very good. That's awesome. You know, so when you're, when you're transitioning um, from just chiropractic care to other things, um, and now you, you have full services from a physical medicine perspective right there in your office, you know, for the business owners out there that are listening and business executives, really what that's called in the business world is cross-selling or upselling opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's, that's extremely helpful to understand and be able to apply the application of what you're talking about to business in general. And it's also very important from a business perspective to understand and be able to identify, you know, who needs what and how they do that. So talk to me about how you upsell and cross sell when someone comes in for a particular type of thing. So they're going to come in and they already think they know what they need, mm -hmm. right? You were talking a little bit about earlier how you do have an assessment. And let's say I come in for chiropractic. How do you then identify, hey, it's really important that you also get this other type of service. Mm -hmm. You might be cross selling and upselling me, but what you're really doing is providing me a solution that I really needed anyway. You're just doing it in a way that you, yeah, you also earn some revenue from mm -hmm. it, right? right. How, how are you identifying that opportunity? Well, it's really based on symptom and and what we and diagnosis as to what we see the patient has and you're, or needs. And you're just listening for yeah. those things. Yeah, that's why we have two ears and one mouth, right? That's, <laughs> that's right. what my dad always right. told me. Uh, but it. but yeah, we need to listen more than we talk. Um, I think that's very important. But as far as being able to cross sell and 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 that's why the collaborative uh, model got started with me is that you know I saw more than just an adjustment. Now I'm a chiropractor. I love adjusting people and I get people well, right? Mm -hmm. But they may have a muscle issue. They may have a postural issue. You know, I would say roughly 70% of my business is people that sit all day. Now the common person wouldn't think that a chiropractic office would be full of people that sit all day, but let's, let's just talk about what they do. They sit at a computer all day. Their hunched shoulders over. are rounded. They're hunched right. over their heads forward. You're describing uh, me. Yeah. And it affects neck, low back, mid back, everything. So, yep. and also the muscle system. So a lot of people that come into me, I mean, their muscles are like palpating two by fours when they're yeah. supposed to be squishy. So, you know, that, that for me is, you know, once I do my exam, then I know they're going to need some massage therapy dip, you know, deep tissue is what we do in our office primarily because it's a therapeutic massage. Um, so we'll, we'll throw that into the treatment plan. Now they may have some really high pain. So then we are able to triage them to Kristen to have specific injections done in that pain site to reduce that pain so that we can do our chiropractic and our massage therapy better. Yeah, I love that. Um, and let's say a patient has a disc injury and they've got pain rating down the leg or down the arm. Then we're able to move them into decompression, a table specific to disc injury, mm -hmm. and actually heal the disc before we start adjusting and doing some of the other stuff. Right. Um, and the other thing about cosmetics, now that you said something a little bit uh, a while ago, Mike, about it being such an outlier. Well, think about this. 70% of my patient volume is women. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, Makes a lot of sense. instead of them traveling to the Northeast to go have their fillers and Botox done, they're right there in our office. Yeah. Right? yeah just go, so, they're already comfortable with your staff. Right. And, and that's, that's something they mentioned later that they see. We don't triage that. Now, not only right? do they feel better physically, <laughs> yeah. but now they... Right. Feel better when they look sure. in the mirror. And so that's kind of how all those things came together. Yeah. So what you're doing is, you know, from a from a revenue perspective for your business is also providing the solution that they need by way of getting them to fill out the original, uh, I guess, the first appointment they were filling out. Hey, what's mm -hmm. bothering them? You're listening to them. You're asking them questions as you provide the care that they originally came in for. Uh, and you're just identifying it. And, and so many business owners out there, business executives and salespeople fail to really listen because they're just constantly trying to sell what it is that they want to sell them, right? right? And so if you're listening and want to build your business, you have to listen to your client base, have to listen to your patients in your case and provide them the solutions uh, that they're gonna be happy with because you know it works for them. Hey, thanks for joining us on our podcast, on our YouTube channel, live on the radio. We really appreciate you and engaging with us here on The Brainstorm with Matt and Mike. Until next time, have a great, productive week.